three, chapter four, three, and big ideas. This section will focus on parallel lines and perpendicular lines. So uh, it says, determine which of the lines, if any, are parallel and explain. Well, one of the things we need to know is how do we determine whether lines are parallel? They, you do it by their slope. Um, parallel lines, whoops, parallel lines will always have the same slope. And we call it, I call it, the dance. <clears throat> if they have the same step, the dance, up three, right one, up three, right one, if both lines are working at the same rate of change going up three, right one, they will never intersect. They will always stay the same distance away in a dance, in a pattern. So they will never intersect. Parallel lines are two lines that never intersect. And the other important thing is they have to be different lines. Um, so uh, we won't get into the fact of determining whether they are different lines in, in this example, in these two examples, but we will determine whether they have the same slopes. So this problem actually misses a very integral part about determining whether they are parallel in the same line or parallel in different lines, but I digress. <clears throat> so line A, let's start off with line A. The way we find the slope is we're going to use the two points. We're going to do y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. So that would give us 5 minus 4 and 1 minus 1, which gives us 1 over 2. So line A has a slope of 1 half. Let's do line B. Line B is going to be 4 minus 7 and 0 minus negative 2. 4 minus 7 is negative 3 over positive 2. So we know that line A and line B will intersect. They will intersect because they do not have the same slope. So lines with different slopes will always intersect at some location. Uh, <clears throat> in line B, and where that line of intersection will be chapter 5, which is coming up momentarily. Line, oh, line B. Line C is going to be 5 minus 4 over 2 minus 0, which is 1 over 2. So we know that line A and line C are going to be parallel. Those are the two parallel lines, A and C. Um, we're good there. Now determine which of the lines are still parallel. We have to make sure we understand the directions and make sure that we are finding the proper thing because 4.3 deals with parallel and perpendicular. Oh, hello, line A. So this time we aren't given points, we're given equations. This equation is not in slope intercept form because we haven't isolated for y. It's just in some arbitrary equation. This is also in an arbitrary equation, and this is also, it's, it looks like it's standard form, but it's not x first, so there's some things. We're going to change all of these into slope intercept form, because that'll be the easiest way to pull the slope, because that is what determines whether a line is parallel or perpendicular. So moving into slope intercept form, or y equals mx plus b is going to be our most efficient way. So we're going to take 6y equals negative x plus 12. We're going to divide everything by 6. Remember, we have to do all of the terms. That's going to be negative 1 6x plus 2. So my slope is equal to negative 1 6 for line A. Let's do line B. Line B is x equals 6y plus 5. <clears throat> We're going to subtract the 5. We can move things over to the left. It's, un, uh, it's not comfortable because we traditionally don't isolate things on the right. But we can do that still and still get solutions. And we get 1 6 x minus 5 6 equals y, which can be written y equals 1 6 x minus 5 6 
which gives us a slope of one-sixth, different from negative one-sixth. Checking, making sure that that's what we did correctly. We moved the five over. Did I write the equation correctly? Yes, good. So that is a correct slope. Let's do <clears throat> line C. Line C's starting equation is negative 6y plus x equals 5. Hmm. Now that's going to be interesting. So uh, we're going to isolate for y, so let's get the x over there first. Negative 6y minus x plus 5. Let's divide by negative 6. And we get y equals positive 1 6x minus 5 6. So this has a slope of 1 6. Now, are they the same lines? Ooh, look at that. Did you notice that? Yeah, so this is, this is, so, oh, I didn't even write that was line B. Line B and line C are parallel, but also they are the same line. So that's interesting. Let's see what the answers say. Um, hmm. I don't know if they meant to do that or if I made a mistake. Let's check my work. Negative 6y plus x. Subtract. That's positive. That's positive. Yeah, that's good. Uh, did I? It's negative 5, 6. That's negative 5, 6. How did we get the negative 5? Yeah. Um, so technically, they aren't parallel. Technically, sorry, book, they are the same lines. So there's a difference between being parallel. Parallel are two distinct lines. So they, line B and line C are actually the same line. Um, so I, I don't know. Um, so we'll do, we'll say line B and C are the same line. And they're the same line because they have the same slope and the same y-intercept. So. Uh, this is the book trying to get tricky and not understanding um, what they're really doing. So be careful on that. In high school, they're probably going to be a little bit more particular about how you answer that question and knowing that uh, they are actually the same line. In exercise three and four, write an equation of the line that passes through the given point and is parallel to the given line. So in this problem, they don't tell you specifically what format to write it in. You, we have learned in 4.1, we learned slope intercept. And in 4.2, we learned point slope form. So since we know both of those equations, technically we can give it in either format. I'll give them to you in both formats. I think that in the book they wanted in slope intercept. But I would accept both because it did not distinguish or distinct it or uh, distinctively tell you which equation it needs to be in. So we'll start with, um, first of all, oh, I like this. This is good. So <clears throat> if it's parallel to this line, we have to find the slope. Uh, the slope, we can't pull the slope out yet because it's not in slope intercept form. So I'm going to add x to both sides. So we have some work to do prior. I love this question. In fact, you will most likely see a question like this on the assessment because you have to, don't make the mistake of thinking that the slope is negative 1 because it's not in slope-intercept form. So the slope is 1 half, and now I will use that to write it in slope-intercept form. So uh, I'm going to fill in for the slope. Uh, I'm going to look for B. I can't figure out B at the moment, so I'm going to plug using this point, 14.3, I think it is, 14.3, and I'm going to fill the 14 in for X, and I'm going to fill the 3 in for Y, and I'm going to solve for B. So we get 3 equals 7 plus B minus 7 minus 7. We get negative 4 equals B. That would be my Y-intercept with a slope of 1 half. So my answer is going to be y equals 1 half x minus 4 in slope-intercept form. If I wanted to use point-slope form, 
So point slope form would look like this. Slope form. I'm going to use the template y minus y sub 1 equals m times the quantity x minus x sub 1. Using the point 14, 3 again. And so y minus my y value, which is 3, equals m, my slope, which is 1 half, times the quantity x minus my x value, which is 14. So I would take this also as an answer. And then if we want to be really meticulous and we have extra time at the end, we can check this. If we simplify this, we can call this checking. We're going to check. We're going to see if this simplifies to my slope intercept. y minus 3 equals 1 half x minus 7. We're going to add 3 and we get y equals 1 half x minus 4, which checks with my slope intercept equation. So I know that I'm correct. All right, that's a good, took me what, 10 seconds? So we'll do the same thing again. Uh, this is not in slope intercept form. So we have to solve for y. We get 2 thirds x minus 1 third. Why do we do this? Because we have to find the slope of this line. If it's going to be parallel, we know it's going to have a similar slope to that line. So we'll pull the slope information, which is 2 thirds, and we're going to use it for our line that is parallel to it and contains that point. So y equals mx plus b. Sorry, we're going to plug in our y uh, using, using the point 3, negative 5. So we'll plug in negative 5 for y. m is 2 thirds, x is 3, and b is b. That's what we're solving for. So we get negative 5 equals 2 plus b minus 2 minus 2. Negative 7 equals b. So my equation for the line that is parallel to y equals 2 thirds x minus 1 third going through the point 3 negative 5 would be y equals 2 thirds x minus 7. And we could be done. You don't have to do extra work. That's more than acceptable, but we like seeing other alternatives. So if we're going to use point slope, we always write our template out and then we fill in for our values. Why are using, what is my point? 3, negative 5? 3, negative 5. So y minus negative 5 equals 2 thirds times the quantity x minus 3. I would always rewrite. You shouldn't have double signs in your point slope format. And that would be the answer for point slope. And then to check, checking, I'm going to simplify that out and make sure I get my answer from above. So y plus 5 equals 2 thirds x minus 2. We're going to minus 5 minus 5. Y equals 2 thirds x minus 7. And it checks. Very nice. Uh, now parallel or perpendicular. So we need to remember, remember, let's remember, parallel. Same slope, perpendicular, perpendicular, perpendicular is opposite reciprocal. So the slopes are going to be opposite reciprocal slope. So let's look at line A, find the slope for line A which is going to be negative 1 minus negative 2 over 1 minus negative 5 equals um, <clears throat> negative 1 plus 2, 1 plus 5, 1 over 6 for line A. Line B. Line B is 6 minus 5, 3 minus negative 3. 1 minus 3 plus 3, 
1 over 6. So we know that A and B are going to be parallel. And now let's do line C. Line C is 1 minus 7 and 1 minus 0. So that is negative 6 over 1, which is negative 6. And this is going to be perpendicular to those two. Perpendicular, because the opposite of negative 6 is positive 6, and then the reciprocal will be 1, one six. So, nice one. Uh, determine, all right, so we're going to convert each of those. We're going to solve them for the same uh, format in order to pull the slope, which will determine whether it's parallel or perpendicular. Uh, add x, 2y equals x plus 3, divide by 2, divide by 2, divide by 2. y equals 1 half x plus 3 halves, has a slope of 1 half. Let's do b. Line b is going to be negative 6x equals 3y minus 1. Um, let's move the 1 over. We get negative 6x plus 1 equals 3y. Divide everything by 3, and we get negative 2x plus 1 third equals y, which has a slope of negative 2. So these two, A and B, are going to be perpendicular to each other because they are opposite reciprocal slopes. And let's do line C to see what that one matches up to. So, all right. Line C. Line C is 4x minus 8y. 4x minus 8y equals 5. Uh, <clears throat> let's move the x. Negative 8y equals negative 4x plus 5. Divide by negative 8. We get y equals 1 half x minus 5 eighths. That has a slope of one half. So C, whoa, C and A are going to be parallel. Can that do that? Yes. Oh, that was nice. That's going to be parallel to C. So A and C are parallel. B is perpendicular to A and perpendicular to C. That's also perpendicular. All right. Exercise 7 and 8, write an equation of the line that passes through the given point is perpendicular to the given line. So this is already in slope-intercept form. So this is the slope equals negative 5. So the line perpendicular to it would have a slope of positive one-fifth. So I take the opposite sign and then I take the reciprocal. So my equation is going to be y equals mx plus b using the point negative three one. So we're going to plug in one for y. My slope is going to be one-fifth, which is opposite perpendicular to the line given. My x value is negative three. That's going to be ugly. It's okay, we can deal with it. Negative three fifths. We should be able to multiply one fifth times negative three. Super easy. Positive three fifths. That gives us one and three fifths for our y intercept. So my equation is y equals one fifth x plus one and three fifths. It could be y equals one fifth x plus eight fifths. Also, I don't mind which one mixed number or improper. Um, if we want to use point slope, let's stay consistent. Point slope people is going to be y minus y sub 1 
equals m times quantity x minus x sub 1 using the point. What is the point? Negative 3, 1. Negative 3, 1. So that would give us y minus 1 equals, what was my slope? 1 fifth x minus negative 3. Y minus 1 equals 1 fifth times the quantity x plus 3 would be an acceptable answer if they said using point slope or put it in a linear equation. And then checking, because it only takes a couple seconds, y minus 1 equals 1 fifth times quantity x plus 3. Y minus 1 equals 1 fifth x plus 3 fifths. Add 1, add 1, and we get, come on down, y equals 1 fifth x plus 1 and 3 fifths, which is the same as what we wrote earlier. So that checks. Check, 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 check. 1, 2, 1, 2. Perpendicular, same thing. They make it nice and easy. So my perpendicular slope, slope of that line is 2. So the perpendicular, perpendicular slope is going to be the opposite, negative, and then the reciprocal of 2, which is 1 half. So I get y equals mx plus b using the point 8, negative 5. So we get negative 5 equals my slope, which is negative 1 half times x is 8 plus b. Negative 5 equals negative 4 plus b. Add 4, add 4, negative 1 equals b. My final equation is going to be y equals negative 1 half x minus 1 would be my equation for the line running perpendicular to it. Point slope. All this practice is good. Don't feel, oh, I have to do it again. You want to be good? You want to be best. You want to be great. If you want to be good, then you're only going to do it once. If you want to be great, you're going to do it every single time so you get the practice. So when you sit down to take the test, you can work as fast as I am working. Minus 5 equals... I've already forgotten what my slope is, negative 1 half x minus 8, y plus 5 equals negative 1 half times the quantity x minus 8. Could be your point slope equation. Checking. Checking is going to be y plus 5 equals negative 1 half times the quantity x minus 8 y plus 5 equals negative 1 half x plus 4 minus 5 minus 5 y equals negative 1 half x minus 1. And does it check? Negative 1 half minus 1? It does. Number 9, we love the word problem, so telecommunications company will be laying new fiber optic cables underground. One cable will be perpendicular to the road shown passing through the point 7, 2. At what point will the cable pass through the... Oh, it's going to be perpendicular. Okay, so first thing we have to do is we have to find the slope of this line. Now, there are multiple ways of doing this. We can go up 2, left 3. So up 2, left 3 converts to 2 over negative 3 for the slope of the line of the road. And so the perpendicular, the slope of the perpendicular line would be the opposite. Remember there's a negative there. I didn't do that negative very well. So it's going to be the opposite sign and then the reciprocal. So the slope of the line perpendicular is going to have a slope of 3 halves. Now, we could have also, if we write down those points, you have negative 2 minus 0, 0 minus negative 3, which gives us negative 2 thirds. Same for this line, not the perpendicular. We're just figuring out there are two different ways of finding the slope of the given road. 
and now we have to calculate the slope of the perpendicular line passing through this point, using this point. So using 7 comma 2, and now let's do it in slope intercept form. Let's fill in the info. We have 2 for y. We have 3 halves as our perpendicular slope. We have 7 as our x. This will be fun. 2 equals 21 halves plus b minus 21 halves minus 21 halves. We're going to convert this to halves. So we have 4 halves minus 21 halves, which is negative uh, 17 halves equals b, which equals negative uh, 8 and 1 half. If you want, either one is okay. So the equation is y equals, my slope is 3 halves x, and you can do minus 8 and a half, or y equals 3 halves x minus 17 halves. Either one, don't give me both, give me one of them. Um, <clears throat> and that didn't answer the question. At what point will the cable pass through the, the road? <laughs> so where is it going to intersect is what it says. Okay, so we have the point 7,2. Let's do a little work. 7,2 is right here and perpendicular. So I can't necessarily draw it. I could do, I know my slope is 3, 2, so I could go up 3, right 2, or I can go down 3, left 2, down 3, left 2. We could do that way. Or we could have used this equation and graphed it. It has a y-intercept of negative 8 halves, and we could draw it out. This is probably the better way of using slope and uh, just doing the dance down. And so we see that the intersecting point is going to be 3, negative 4. Intersects, intersects at 3, negative 4, 3, negative 4. So that is the answer, not the equation. It doesn't want an equation for the road. However, this is the road perpendicular, that's a perpendicular sign, the road perpendicular formula, a linear equation for the road perpendicular would be that, but it asks for the location. At what point will the cable pass? It'll pass at 3, negative 4. Good question. That's not an easy one. That's a lot of comprehension, a lot of understanding, and utilizing what you know to help you with what you don't. Uh, determine whether the statement is always, sometimes, or never true. A line with a positive slope and a line with a negative slope are perpendicular. Um, so we think of situations. Is there any time where it is? And I'm going to have to say um, uh, well, a line with a positive slope and a line with a negative slope are perpendicular. That's a negative slope. I mean, can you tell me a situation where you have a negative slope and a positive slope where they don't intersect? I, I don't know why it wouldn't be always. The answer says sometimes, <laughs> sometimes it is possible for two lines to be perpendicular. What? Are perpendicular. Determine whether it's, it's always, no? All right. Uh, it is possible for two lines to be perpendicular because the signs of the slope of perpendicular lines are opposite, but not all lines with slopes of opposite signs are perpendicular. Uh, give me, that doesn't tell me. I don't know which one. You can't do zero. Oh, could you do zero and negative zero? No, that's not positive or negative. So I disagree with you. I absolutely disagree with you. I think that it's always. You haven't given me always, because zero is not positive nor negative, uh, and no reciprocal. Why wouldn't it be? Tell, I, I, I can't see the reason why it's not always. You tell me, book. A vertical line and a horizontal line are perpendicular. Uh, that's always, yes. Um, 
the x-axis and y-axis are perpendicular. Yeah, that's true. Um, oh, is it perpendicular or intersect? Ah, <coughs> perpendicular. Sorry. Now I understand. I was thinking intersecting. I kept thinking intersecting. But perpendicular, I understand. No, they're not always. They have to be very, very interesting. So you can have positive 2 and negative 1 third, and they're not perpendicular. Uh, so, yeah, it's only sometimes when you have 2 and negative 1 half. No, yes, this is real easy. Of course, it's sometimes. My bad. Mr. Mac was not reading the directions. Sometimes. Yes, no. Positive, negative. I thought it was intersecting. All positive, align with a positive slope and a negative slope, definitely intersect every single time. But maybe they aren't perpendicular. Only sometimes they're perpendicular. Sorry. A vertical and horizontal line are always perpendicular. Uh, two horizontal lines are perpendicular. Um, no, never. That's going to be never. They're never going to be perpendicular. That's an easy one. Because um, they're going to always, two horizontal lines will always have the same slope, which is zero. Yes. All right. That was a long one, but very beneficial. Lots of little nuggets for you to pay attention to. Talk to you.